Jewish education Hebrew, Hein Chinook, is the transmission of the tenets, principles and religious laws of Judaism. Known as, "...people of the book", Jews value education. The emphasis and value of education is strongly embedded in Jewish culture. Judaism places a heavy emphasis on Torah study. Throughout Jewish history, the tradition of Jewish education began with the Old Testament during Biblical times. The Bible describes the purpose of Jewish education. The main purpose in the Bible is to know how to worship God. Therefore, Jewish parents needed to teach their children about some basic prayers and what the Torah forbids at their young ages. Parents should have transmitted Jewish morals, faith, and values to their children. The Bible's teachings have important impact on Jewish education. Because of this, Jewish education is rooted in the Torah. Nathan H. Winter wrote, Torah has also been described as that dealing with the whole existence of the human being, that which touches life at every point. Torah also connotes learning, instruction, and guidance. Jewish education was concerned with the transmission of this cultural heritage to the individual Jew. History Jewish education has been valued since the birth of Judaism. Abraham is lauded for instructing his offspring in God's ways. One of the basic duties of Jewish parents is to provide for the instruction of their children as set forth in the first paragraph of the Shema Yisrael prayer, Take to heart these instructions with which I charge you this day. Impress them upon your children. Recite them when you stay at home and when you are away, when you lie down and when you get up. Bind them as sign on your hand and let them serve as a symbol on your forehead. Inscribe them on the doorposts of your house and your gates. Doi, 6 -6 Additionally, children are advised to seek the instruction of their parents. Remember the days of old, consider the years of many generations, ask thy father, and he will declare unto thee, thine elders, and they will tell thee. Doi, 32 -7. The book of Proverbs also contains many verses related to education. My son, do not forget my teaching, but let your mind retain my commandments, for they will bestow on you length of days, years of life and well-being. Prov. 3-1-2. Elementary school learning was regarded as compulsory by Simeon ben Shetta as early as 75 BCE and Joshua ben Gamla in 64 CE. The education of older boys and men in a Beit Midrash goes back to the Second Temple period. The importance of education is stressed in the Talmud, which states that children should begin school at six. The rabbis stated that they should not be beaten with a stick or cane, that older students should help those who were younger, and that children should not be kept from their lessons by other duties. According to Judah ben Tima, at five years the age is reached for studying Mikra, at ten for studying the Mishnah, at thirteen for fulfilling the Mitzvah, at fifteen for studying Talmud Avot 521. Micra refers to the written Torah, Mishnah refers to the complementary oral Torah the concise and precise laws dictating how the written Torah's commandments are achieved and Talmud refers to comprehension of the oral and written law's unity and contemplation of the laws. The term, Talmud, used here is a method of study and is not to be confused by the later compilations by the same name. In keeping with this tradition, Jews established their own schools or hired private tutors for their children until the end of the 18th century. Schools were housed in annexes or separate buildings close to the synagogue. Rabbi Meir Simha of Devinsk in his Meshech Chakma observes that God's statement Abraham is blessed because he will instruct his children and his house after him to follow in God. S ways to perform righteousness and justice Genesis chapter 18 verse 19 is an implicit mitzvah to teach Judaism citation needed topic formal Jewish education topic topic sex segregation topic Sex segregation in education has traditionally been the norm. As of 2012, education in the Haredi community was strictly segregated by sex. The education for boys was primarily focused on the study of Jewish scriptures, such as the Torah and Talmud, while girls obtained studies both in Jewish education as well as broader secular subjects. Topic. Primary schooling 
The Talmud Tractate Bhava Bathra 21a attributes the institution of formal Jewish education to the first century sage Joshua ben Gamla. Prior to this, parents taught their children informally. Ben Gamla instituted schools in every town and made education compulsory from the age of six or seven. The Talmud attaches great importance to the Tinokot Shel Beth Rabbin. The children who study at the rabbi's house, stating that the world continues to exist for their learning and that even for the rebuilding of the temple in Jerusalem, classes are not to be interrupted. Tractate Shabbat 119b. Topic: The yeshiva. Topic. In Mishnake and Talmudic times young men were attached to a Beth Din court of Jewish law, where they sat in three rows and progressed as their fellow students were elevated to sit on the court, citation needed after the formal court system was abolished, yeshivo became the main places for Torah study. The Talmud itself was composed largely in the yeshivo of Sura and Pumbedita in Babylonia, and the leading sages of the generation taught there. Yeshivo have remained of central importance in the Orthodox community to this day. Until the 19th century, young men generally studied under the local rabbi, who was allocated funds by the Jewish community to maintain a number of students. The Hasidic masters and the Lithuanian rabbi Chaim Volozhin both founded centralized yeshivo, citation needed in the 21st century. Critics in both the United States and Israel, such as Naftuli Moster, have protested that some yeshivas are teaching religious studies to the exclusion of secular subjects such as mathematics and science. They are promoting the adoption of national or state standards on secular subjects by the yeshivas. Israel's Ministry of Education statistics from 2014 show that only about 22% of Haredi students take matriculation exams, since Orthodox yeshivo mostly ignore core subjects. About 8% of Haredi students pass the exam. Miriam Ben Peretz, Professor Emeritus of Education at the University of Haifa, and winner of the 2006 Israel Prize notes, more and more Israeli students don't have any foundation of knowledge, any basics—not in math, not in English, not in general. Things have to change. Some Israelis who have been educated in Haredi yeshivas have established Leaving for Change (LFC), an organization seeking to sue the government for alleged failure to enforce Israel's law for compulsory education. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Jewish schools. Topic: <inaudible> Cheder in Marin, 1912. The phenomenon of the. Jewish Day School is of relatively common origin. Until the 19th and 20th century, boys attended the cheddar literally room, since it was in the synagogue, which historically was a building with a bet midrash being the only room or Talmud Torah where they were taught by a Melamed Tinoko's children s teacher. The first Jewish day schools developed in Germany, largely in response to the higher emphasis in general on secular studies. In the past, an apprenticeship was sufficient to learn a profession, or alternatively several years in a gymnasium could prepare one adequately for university. Rabbis who pioneered Jewish day schools included Rabbi Shimson Raphael Hirsch, whose Realschule in Frankfurt a main served as a model for numerous similar institutions. Jews have also been disproportionately engaged in the building of academic institutions of education and in promoting teaching as a professional career. Three of the past four presidents of the American Federation of Teachers have been Jews, starting with Albert Shanker, her successor Sandra Feldman, all the way to current AFT president, Randy Weingarten. Today, there are over 750 day schools in the United States and 205,000 students in those schools. Beyond those students, hundreds of thousands approximately of Jewish children attend supplementary religious, Hebrew, and congregational schools. Topic. Girls' education Topic. It was also in the 19th and early 20th century, with the advent of public education for all, that an emphasis was first placed on girls' education. Before this, particularly in Eastern Europe, girls received their Jewish and Hebrew education at home, and were often illiterate in Hebrew. In the 19th century, public education was made compulsory in most of Europe, and in order to maintain educational control over the Jewish children, Jewish schools became a reality. 
It was as a result of the initiative of Sarah Shenayer, that the first Jewish girls' BAI's Yaakov School opened in Krakow in 1918. Girls in the United States at this time were often educated at public schools together with boys, and they received their Jewish education through programs at synagogues and Sunday schools, because Jewish day schools were less common. In the Jewish society, women were not allowed to participate in most synagogue prayer, and they only allowed to engage in communal prayer. During the 19th century, women could only read Yiddish. Parents should have sent their sons to the primary school, so that their sons could have learned the Hebrew language and the Torah text. Some wealthier parents even employed private tutors for their sons at home. However, some girls in the wealth family may be given the opportunity to learn Jewish vernacular and Hebrew as well. Many girls remained illiterate during the old times. Women stayed home with their family or worked jobs such as maids and seamstresses. After the World War II began, more and more women were used as spies, couriers, nurses, and some even became soldiers. Until the end of World War II, women had transformed into Jewish studies research and teaching in the 21st century. The balance of women and men made great strides in equality in Jewish schools. <laughs> Informal Jewish education Youth groups Topic. Recent when, studies estimate a population of 650,000 Jewish middle and high school students, dead link most of these attend Jewish youth groups or participate in activities funded by Jewish youth organizations Jewish youth organizations. Many of these are Zionist youth movements. The various organizations differ in political ideology, religious affiliation, and leadership structure, although they all tend to be characterized by a focus on youth leadership. The conservative movement has USY, United Synagogue Youth. The modern Orthodox movement has NCSY, formerly National Conference of Synagogue Youth. BBYO is a non-denominational group, though most Jews associate it with the conservative or reform movements. The North American Federation of Temple Youth, known as NFTY, is the organized youth movement of Reform Judaism in North America. Funded and supported by the Union for Reform Judaism, NFTY exists to supplement and support reform youth groups at the synagogue level. About 750 local youth groups affiliate themselves with the organization, comprising over 8,500 youth members. Topic summer camps Topic Jewish summer camps are a tool for creating ties with a particular denomination of Judaism and or orientation to Israel. Camps are sponsored by the Orthodox, Conservative, Reconstructionist, and Reform movement, by Jewish community centers, and by Zionist movements such as Young Judea, Habanum Dror, Hashomer Hatzair and Bnei Akiva. Over 70,000 campers participate in over 150 non-profit Jewish summer camps, especially in the United States. In addition, the Foundation for Jewish Camp estimates that these camps are staffed by over 8,500 Jewish college-aged counselors. American-style Jewish summer camps can also be found in other countries, such as Camp Kamama in Israel. Outside the United States, similar camps are generally organized by various philanthropic organizations and local Jewish youth movements. The Camp Rama Network, affiliated with conservative Judaism runs camps in North America where youngsters experience traditional Shabbat observance, study Hebrew and observe the laws of Kashrut. The Union for Reform Judaism runs the largest Jewish camping system in the world, the URJ Camp and Israel programs. They operate 13 summer camps across North America, including a sports specialty camp, teen leadership institute and programs for youth with special needs, as well as a number of Israel travel programs. Participants in these programs observe Shabbat, engage in programming about Jewish values and history, and partake in typical summer camp activities including athletics, creative arts and color war. Topic student organizations Topic Much informal Jewish education is organized on university campuses. This is often supported by national organizations, such as Hillel United States or the Union of Jewish Students United Kingdom, or by international organizations such as the World Union of Jewish Students and the European Union of Jewish Students. The Rohr Jewish Learning Institute in partnership with the Chabad on Campus International Foundation, manages the Sinai Scholars Society, an integrated fellowship program for college campus students comprising Torah study, social activities, and national networking opportunities. 
Topic drama based education topic One of the earliest examples of drama based Jewish education is the theatrical works of Rabbi Moshe Chaim Lozado, who wrote plays with multiple characters on Jewish themes. While the use of such plays was probably rare in traditional Jewish education, the Etz Chaim School of Jerusalem reportedly staged plays in the 1930s. One such play put King David's general Joab on trial for his various crimes. The students and faculty played the roles of judge, advocates and a jury, all based on extensive biblical and Talmudic research. In more recent times, drama is being further developed as an educational tool Three. For example, Detroit, Michigan has an ensemble theater devoted to education and outreach Four. Programs such as Jewish Crossroads by Shlomo Horwitz provide educational theater in schools and synagogues in various English-speaking countries 5. The Lukstein Center at Bar Ilan, a think tank geared to Jewish educators in the diaspora, lists many drama-related programs on their website for use of teachers in the classroom 6. Topic Sports-based education Topic Sports is another vehicle to connect Jewish youth to Judaism and Israel. Bring It In, Israel offers a sports volunteering program in Israel that cultivates a cadre of young leaders who return to their communities to promote interest in Israel and Judaism. The perceived role of sports as a historical avenue was crucial for Jewish people to overcome social, religious and cultural obstacles toward their participation in secular society especially in Europe and the United States. References Topic. Topic. External links. Topic. American Jewish University. Nukahe, Reimaging Jewish Education for the 21st Century. The Lukstein Center for Jewish Education. Shalom Hartman Institute. The Jewish Teacher Project. The Jewish Education Project.